Hi, welcome to Eucharist at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. Uh, this is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and we will be following along um, for those that have this booklet, use this booklet, or follow along in the Book of Common Prayer. As always, we'll have the links to the Book of Common Prayer and the readings in the description below the video. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my words be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and, and succeed in the thing which I have set for it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace, the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 65, uh, verse 9 through 14. We'll read it responsibly at the half verse. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river, the river of God, God is full of water. You prepare the grain. For so, so you, you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy and rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness. And your and paths overflow with plenty. plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills, the hills be clothed, clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let, Let them, them shout, shout for joy and sing. A reading from the Book of Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. 
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal, to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love us, the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what it was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So today I want to talk to you about the rule of law versus the rule of love. The rule of the flesh versus the rule of the spirit. So one of the first rules we're taught as children is don't put your hand on the eye of the stove, right? And nothing makes us want more than to touch the eye of the stove, if we're told not to touch the eye of the stove, right? And so invariably, most children will at some point put their hand on the eye of the stove and find out, oh, that's rather hot, and never do it again, right? So initially, we have this law, this rule that's set forth to prevent us from doing a thing that's going to hurt us, right? These days, I don't need that rule. I don't want to touch the eye of the stove. I just don't. I don't want to be burned, right? So at some point, you sort of internalize 
that rule and realize, oh, that's probably for the best, that's why I shouldn't do it. Later on, these rules get more complex in our lives, right? A little bit later in childhood, we um, get on a playground, let's say, and we're told that we shouldn't bite, hit, kick, push, whatever, right? No, no physically attacking other children on the playground, right? We're not really sure why at first, because, you know, he's on the swing and I want the swing, so if I push him off the swing, I get the swing, right? Like, it's just, like just science, really. And, you know, if he's annoying me, I'm gonna bite him, right? He's annoying me, why not bite the kid? But at some point, we realize that that's not the right thing to do, right? Because at some point in our childhood development, we start developing empathy. This ability to put ourselves in the shoes of another person, to, to understand how that might affect them, and to think how that would feel if we were the one being shoved or bitten, right? And then the rule doesn't, doesn't hold as much power over us as the actual desire not to harm someone else, right? Now, some never, some just never get this rule, right? Some never internalize and they uh, continue to do the law to keep them from hurting other people. But I think for most of the populace, um, most people sort of internalize that. And so we have this difference between sort of the external law and the internalization of ethics or morals. Right? We see that developing. And Paul here is, is sort of talking about that as well, um, contrasting this, the flesh with the spirit. And he talks about the, the law of sin and of death, right? Because laws, laws don't add anything to us. They can really only detract from us, right? Like, if you break the law, then you're going to get punished in some way. Right, and so Paul talks a lot about the wages of sin being death. Right, we we do things sinfully, and it causes us to wither and die. And on the other hand, we have this idea of the spirit, which gives life. Right. So in the flesh, if we just lived in a sort of animalistic sort of way, right? Uh, if I'm hungry, and you have an apple. I'm going to take your apple, probably hit you over the head, take your apple, I'm no longer hungry, sorry for you, right? But maybe the empathetic thing is to ask, hey, we're both hungry, can I maybe have half your apple? Or so the person eat and you can go about your life finding an apple for yourself, right? So the law of the flesh now this, now this desire, this sort of animal desire to, to feed, to reproduce, to, to claim power for myself, to, to uh, exert myself out in the world, right? It's very individualistic. It serves only the self. But the spirit that Paul is talking about here is the spirit of Christ, this cosmic spirit of Christ that connects everyone. So if you are living according to the Spirit, you are, by default, living in a connected sort of way. You're living in a way that recognizes the Christ in yourself, and the Christ in the other person, and the Christ in the person that lives you know, on the other side of the world. You see that commonality between everyone, and the way that what you do affects everyone else. That's what it is to live within the body of Christ, the Spirit of Christ. It's kind of the opposite of living in the flesh, right? It's no longer individualistic, but connected to everything around you, right? Now, unfortunately, we don't always live in the spirit, right? And so what I've noticed, especially lately, is how quickly we can devolve as human beings, how quickly that if, if we're being encouraged by someone else, if, we, if someone in authority says it's okay, then we're gonna do probably some selfish things, some things of the flesh, some things uh, that are animalistic, right? 
If people tell us it's okay to not be caring, if people tell us it's okay to be cruel or bigoted or divisive, we're going to devolve as a society into that baser form, unless we heed a higher voice, right? And this is what Jesus is talking about today, this, uh, the word of the kingdom. He's talking all the time about spreading the good news, right, the evangelion of the, the, the kingdom, right? And I've said this before, but maybe you haven't heard this yet, but this word euangelion uh, comes from this idea of, uh, of a person, a messenger, spreading good news. And what would happen is if when, when once a city went from being under the rule of one ruler to the rule of another ruler, so, so a general came through and liberated the city or you know, an emperor conquered the area or whatever, then this euangelion, this euangelios, would come through uh, and say, good news, everybody, good news. You're no longer under, you know, Bob's rule, but now you're under Henry's rule. Yay! Right? And that's the good news, that you're no, now under new management. Right? And so the good news of Jesus Christ is that you can be under the management of, the rulership of, God. That you can have, rather this rule of sin, of death, of the flesh, this rule of law that keeps you kind of under its thumb, you can be so connected to the rule of love that you no longer need to be held under their, their thumb with, with these rules. That once you realize how connected you are to each other, once you love your neighbor as yourself, then things get much better, both for you and for your neighbor and eventually the world. That's the good news, right? So we're talking about whom do you follow, right? We see in this parable of the sower, Jesus is, is sort of putting out what happens when this good news of, you know, that you're now under the law of love rather than the law of uh, uh, the flesh. Um, he talks about what happens. He says, uh, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, the good news, and does not understand it, doesn't really get that you can be loving, that you can be empathetic, that you can care about others, and it's okay. The evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. The evil one here, namely Lucifer, right, is famously known for this, his statement, non servion, that was his first sin, I, I do not serve, right? Lucifer refused to serve God. And in so doing, he wanted to claim power for himself, right? He wanted power not to serve, whereas Christ came to serve, not to be served, right? So. Lucifer, the, the evil one here, represents all those who would wish to claim power rather than to serve. We see this in our world all the place, right? These, these so-called leaders who want to be despots, who want to be in control, who want power and wealth. And they're glad to remove these concepts of interconnectedness and love for the other and empathy because when they can remove that, they can instill an idea of fear, of us and them, of alienation and, and tribalization. And those who want power thrive in those situations, right? They can demonize others, and they can unite their people in a frothing mass against whoever they say they should be against, right? We see this often in the news, do we not? Moving on. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yay, good news. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that a person immediately falls away. Part of what we do as Christians or, or uh, any sort of spiritual sort of uh, endeavor 
we, we, we work on our empathy. We work on our sense of connectedness. We work on our love for other people. And it's that constant love that kind of cores out a space, it carves out a space in our hearts for more love and more empathy. So that when the bad times hit, we have a nice deep pocket of love and empathy. But many people, they think, oh my gosh, yeah, that sounds great. You know, they'll listen to the sermon or listen to whomever else says that love is good. And they'll think, yeah, I like love. Love's pretty cool. But when push comes to shove, they revert back to their animalistic behaviors. They revert back to the law of flesh. Whatever I can get away with, I should, right? And it's me, first come, first serve. I should get all the power and the food and the sex and the whatever else they want, right? So that's that. As what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. I think this is a big one these days. I think that there are so many other plants wishing to grow in the fertile soil that is our hearts and our souls. These weeds of concepts. And they are all vying for control. And these voices can come from your political party, they can come from your workplace, you know, the, you know, greed is good, corporate uh, warfare against other corporations, you know, vying for power and wealth and market share and all these things. They can come from our, our peer groups, people who aren't maybe so kind, um, exerting pressure on you to not be as kind as well, telling you unkind jokes, um, wanting you to sort of be in on their own bigotry and hatred. Uh, it could be your family, a family who, you know, maybe was abusive as you were growing up. And so this weed of abuse grows up in your heart where love is trying to take place. And it's hard for you to love in a good way when the abuse is choking out that ability to love, right? So we have to be careful what we allow to grow in our hearts. Anybody who's ever had a garden knows that the weed will grow much faster than the, the fruit, right? You have to be vigilant all the time to pluck those weeds out or they'll soon overtake our garden. If you don't believe that, come by our house and look at our garden currently. It is a mess. <laughs> so trust me, constant diligence is necessary, right? You have to continue to pluck out these weeds so that your, the thing that gives fruit, that, that gives life and nourishment, has a chance to be birthed forth. That's what was sown on good soil. This is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case, a hundredfold, another 60, and another 30. Here's the thing. If you can get something fruitful and nourishing growing up out of you, if you can be loving, if you can be empathetic, if you can turn from your fleshly, animalistic desires to a more interconnected, empathy, love for other people, understanding that what you do and what you say and the world they live in can contribute to their happiness or their suffering. If you can start to exert that in the world, the world will change. It will bear a hundredfold or eightyfold or thirtyfold because it too wants to spread its seed. It too wants to bloom forth and, and seed and grow and, and find other fertile soil. And that's what we're looking for, right? Especially I think in this time when there's so many birds, so many evil ones who want power coming to uh, snatch our stuff away, when our, our concern for others is kind of shallow and doesn't bear much prodding when there's so many other voices, harsh voices, mocking voices, cruel voices, bigoted voices who want to choke out our ability to grow forth in love. It's so important now to let 
that empathy grow, to let that love grow. Let the Spirit of Christ bloom forth in you and recognize all the other beautiful fruit around you. Amen. Let's say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. Your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. In our works we find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. They may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we, we also, also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord God, in this time of um, disease, a pandemic, this time when um, some of our leaders are choosing to uh, divide us, to, to demonize different parties, to cause divisions in this nation. We ask that the Spirit of Christ grow forth in a mighty way. We ask you to nourish that spirit within each of us. We ask you to help us to see Christ in others. We know that whatever we do to each other, we do to you, O Christ. So we ask that we treat others as we would treat you, and as we would want to be treated. Help us learn the law of love, the law of the spirit, not the law of the flesh. Help us be freed by that. Help us to find the health in that, that when we learn to quit being prideful, quit being uh, ornery, <laughs> quit being, uh, w being willing to serve, being willing to concern ourselves with the health of others, then this whole thing will go away. Whenever we learn love and empathy, it's amazing, but the suffering of the world goes away. And we'll be able to see that very clearly in this situation. 
that those who concern themselves with the well-being of other people, their societies are now free from disease. Lord God, we ask that this country learn that lesson quickly, learn that lesson well, and help to sustain us in the path of love and, and righteousness. We pray especially now for our sister Karen Slobodian, who uh, continues to have um, uh, some, some uh, health concerns. We ask we look over uh, Georgia and Al, Joe and Tracy, Sonny, and all those who are laid low during this time. As we approach the start of the school year, we ask for your uh, wisdom and our leaders about reopening schools, spare our teachers and spare our children the touch of death and suffering. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned sinned against against you you, in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. So, we had hoped to have the church reopened by now. Uh, that did not happen because, again, some people are uh, being a little prideful right now and not letting the, um, the measures uh, that we need to bring down this, this uh, virus take hold. Right? Uh, so we have another surge in this area, in Allegheny County, uh, that set us back. Uh, so we are uh, where we normally would be able to have church now we cannot. Uh, so we're hoping that will change soon. Um, as soon as we're able to safely do that, we will have uh, church in this building again, using all kinds of safety protocols in place. Um, so be praying for that. Be, pr- uh, be prayerful and considerate about if we do open back up, if you want to come or not. Um, people who are over a certain age, people who have uh, underlying health conditions should definitely uh, think twice before exposing yourselves to, to risk, not just in church, but everywhere, right? Uh, please be careful and please be loving with yourself and those around you. If it means defaulting, even if you don't agree, even if you think you know better, just default to the kindness, default to the possibility that you might be helping someone, default to the possibility that you might save someone's life or their health. Just, just default to kindness. It's not hard. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be an incarnate and virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you brought us out of error into truth, of sin into righteousness, of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, and said, Take this, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, and the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you shall drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where, with blessed Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, and you do the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory towards Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them for which the Christ died for you. Give them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Do this as communion prayer on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living words of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have put us spiritual food and the sacraments of the body and the blood. And this now is the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you by the and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, life is short, and there is not much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love. Make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.